Hey y'all, we're here at the Springs. We're doing a spring measurement on a Can-Am, but it's the same thing for any vehicle. So here's how we'll go through the process. First, we need to find the spring rate, and if it's printed on them, that's the best. This is a 16, three inch uh, ID, 350 pound spring. And at ride height, after driving the car, we're gonna measure the length. We wanna measure the length of the spring to get the sag number. And this one measures 14. So we're going to write this down. 16, 3, 350 equals 14. So I'll show you how to measure. I measure from the top of the spring right there to the bottom of the spring. It's fairly simple, but that's how you measure it. Then I'm going to measure the upper spring. You need to find what it is, and it is at 8, 3, 300. You won't be able to see it on camera, but it's printed right there. So we write down 8, 3, 300, and it measures 5 and 3 quarters. 5.75. You might want to know the amount of shaft showing at right height, the amount of shaft showing. So I'm going to measure, and I have to measure down the spring cup to where the, the actual shaft bottoms on the eyelet, and I, act, I don't take into account anything for the foam bump. It will crush to zero if you hit it hard enough, so we don't even take into account. And this is seven and three quarter inches of shaft showing, 7.75. The last measurement we do while we're up front here is we're going to measure the right height under the skid plate, and this is after driving. There's a lot of scrub on these cars, and if you just set them down from a jack, they'll stand up really tall, so you have to drive it to get this measurement. We're going to go behind the trailing arm to the skid plate, and we're going to measure 17 and a half inches. 17 and a half inches. And we're just going to put that somewhere so we can measure it. And then we're going to look at this at the tire size, and it's a 35 inch tire. We need to know that for that ground height measurement. And then we're going to do the exact same measurements in the back. I won't talk you through, we'll just have the camera follow along while I do it. Can you slow down? Yep. Seventeen point six two five. We're gonna measure the the right head under the skid, and we're gonna have our old dog help us. And so we're gonna measure right there, right about the motor mount, and that is seventeen and three quarter inches. So seventeen and three quarter inches. the car to get the droop measurements. So let's go up front and raise the car up. You don't have to use a dancing crane hoist if you don't have one, but it's easy for me, so that's what I do. Seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter. See that again? Right to the bottom of the spring, seven and a quarter. 
and then we'll take we'll measure the lower spring. Fifteen and a half. And then we want the amount of shaft showing again. So again, we act like the foam bump is not there. We measure down to the bottom where it would hit, and that's right at eleven inches. And then, we'll, and that's where we have the shaft showing at ride height and the shaft showing at droop, and that gives us. That gives us our total sag number with that. We'll just subtract seven and a half from 11 and that will give us our sag number. We'll do this math later. Right now we're just getting the measurements. Earlier you watched us measure the springs on a Can-Am to determine the proper spring rates on it. And uh, I wanted to go through the math with you kind of so you kind of see what we did. Um, the first thing we have to do when we measure the, the, the springs is we need to know what they are. So we found on the springs that they were stamped with an 8 by 3 by 300. So 8 inch long, 3 inch ID, 300 pounds per inch. And that upper spring was 5.75 inches long. So if, our, if we take our calculator we all carry in our pocket that our math teacher said we wouldn't. And we take an 8 inch spring and we subtract 5.75 from that. We get 2.25 inches. Okay. So that is our spring sag number. That's the uh, front upper spring sag number at ride height after the car has been driven in onto a flat surface and gently parked so it doesn't move around too much and we get as accurate a spring sag as we can. We know that spring sag times rate is load and what we're looking for is load. So we're going to, well we should have gone 2.25 times the, the rate of 300 is 675 pounds. So 675 pounds. I always do both springs. I don't just do one, I do both because it's a good time to find anomalies and mistakes. If this spring is drastically different in either length or load or any of the things that should be, that should work out per the math, then we know we've got a problem when we can go looking for it. Often it's a mistake by the measure. Ask me how I know. So we'll take 16 and we'll subtract 14, uh, I know, it's 2. 2 times 350 is 700. I know, I could have done the math in my head, but I don't do that. So we have 700 pound load on the lower spring, and we have 675 pound load on the upper spring, and they're 25 pounds different we're not terribly worried about that because there's plenty of room for tolerance mistakes when we're measuring from a tape measure in both of them. We could have measured this one slightly wrong one way and this, this one slightly wrong the other way and come up with this number. Also Hooke's Law uh, says that a, a bending wire is going to be most consistent in the middle of travel between rest and yield and inconsistent on the ends near yield or near rest. And so we know the early part of this spring may be a little bit soft and the late part and the early part of this spring may be a little bit firm and that gives us that 25 pounds so we're not terribly worried about it. But for practicality's sake, we're going to use 700 as our number. So 700 pound load. Now what do we do with that 700 pound load? Well, while we were measuring, we took the ride height shaft showing number of 7.75. We also took a droop number of 11 inches. So if we take the full droop number of 11, and I need to say something here that I always measure droop on the strap, because unless you're gonna take the strap off every time you hit a bump and extend the shock, then the strap is your droop number. So we take 11, we subtract 7.75, we get 3.25. We also know that an off-road vehicle wants between one and two inches of preload. Um, and we also know, and we know for sure that Can-Ams like being sprung a little bit heavy. So 
we usually go about one inch of preload. So we're going to add one inch of preload to our sag number, our shock sag number of 3.25 to get 4.25 inches, 4.25 inches. That's a plus one. And then to do a plus two, we're going to do 5.25. So we're going to do the math on this. We're going to take our 700 number. And we're going to, nope, we're going to divide it by 4.25 and we equal 164. So that's the spring rate we want when we're at our heavy one inch preload end. Uh, then we're going to do the same thing with the 5.25 which would be the, the light end. 700 divided by 5.25 is 133. So somewhere between 164 and 133. Now we, uh, we gotta figure out how do we determine that. So the way to determine the combined rate spring, the combined spring spring rate is you take the upper rate times by the lower rate and then you divide that total by the upper rate divided, divided uh, the upper rate plus the lower rate. So we're going to go, I'll do that real quick, 300 times 350 equals uh, 105, 105,000. But then we're gonna divide that by 300 plus 350, 650, we equal 161. So we have 161 inch pound spring on there now. We want at the high end 164 we're really close. In fact, we're probably not going to get a closer combination. So we're happy with this one. Uh, we also know that this car had a 17.75 inch under the skid plate ride height, which is right where it should be with a 35 inch tire. And with that being said, we're close enough on the front spring. We're going to go run it and start working on damping, valving, and, uh, and other tuning things. So that's it. Thank you very much. Hey all, that's our uh, spring setup. And uh, if you like what you saw and you want to see more like that, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can see when more comes out. Also, we'd love it if you left us a comment down in the thing down there so that I can, re I can read it and see what you want to see. Ask questions, whatever you want to see, we'll try to do our best to make a video on it. Thank you very much, thanks for watching.